it's all things MMA. Uh, my name is Ken McGuire. We're back on air again. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him over Stuffing there. Stuffing me, babe. Having his breakfast while we're supposed to be recording things. Uh, we are talking all things MMA as we do every week on KCLR, uh, joined uh, by uh, Miles, the breakfast man. Price, what's what is for breakfast? Oh, yeah. What's the story over there? It's kind of late uh, in the day as well for this crack. It is, yeah. I, the breakfast is kind of like any part of the day for me. There's no <laughs> scheduled type of meals. Yeah, <laughs> uh, porridge, 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 man. Yeah, that's it. Okay, practice what you preach. That's that's the big thing. Uh, Miles, a couple of things have happened since we had a chance to catch up last. You wanted to touch on uh, UFC Vegas uh, 22, which was um, from the podcast side of things. It was just like a couple of days ago when we go to air at the weekend. It'll be it'll be a week back. Um, but the 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 main event that came out of, uh, of that one was at um, middleweight. It was uh, Kevin Holland and, and Derek Brunson. Holland going into the fight as, as the 10th ranked um middleweight Brunson as the the seventh ranked middleweight he's got his eyes on big prizes uh looked yeah. pretty looked pretty good there was a there was an awful lot of kind of mouthy aggro stuff before this um but uh, maybe maybe talk us through it because I'll, I'll be totally honest i didn't watch the fight i i read i read everything that happened in the aftermath so what what happened when the doors closed <clears throat> Um, I, I didn't uh, listen to or see any of the lead up uh, to the fight, but uh, just from watching the fight, <clears throat> it's just Kevin Holland. I, I think that Kevin Holland, no matter what way the fight is going, he seems to always be talking throughout the fight, you know, and mm-hmm. smack talk. And I think it's his way of dealing with anxiety and trying to get into the flow of a fight, you know, uh, which is understandable. But I mean, I think from what you were telling me there before we came on came on air was about Dana was a little bit upset about it too and I can kind of see why where that frustration comes from because Kevin was clearly losing the fight and he just kept on talking you know and he was doing things like body triangling from guard which isn't really a great position I mean it just holds some but like you have to open your guard in order to get your feet you know significant uh, and create space so um I didn't really see like it's entertaining to a degree until he's losing and he's still smack talking and then it just becomes annoying so it just turned into Derek Brunson out wrestling and completely out wrestling and I'm like there's a couple yeah. of moments where Kevin could have you know switched them he's one of those guys that he can finish it but you know Derek had the right approach he turned it into a bit of a wrestling match and he held him down and used his size and that's kind of was the story of the fight he just took him down Kevin kept on talking smack and wasting his energy talking Mm. smack as opposed to you know using that energy to get up and I feel like that if you were on bottom and you are talking a bit of smack, at least try and get a reaction out with somebody. So they lift their head to respond and then you kind of like back up and technically stand up again, you know, and safely. I think that would be good if there was tactics and substance behind your smack talk. But if there's nothing really behind it and you're just doing it for the sake of that, you're a bit crazy, then it is going to be irritating, especially to the boss man, I suppose. It doesn't really shine too much of a decent light uh, as a result, despite previous performances on Kevin Holland. Mm. Kevin Holland has had some you, I, I, I wouldn't take it away from him but some yeah. of the wins he's had are, are kind of crazy like you know like the the Jacare win I mean that was mental like just knocking him out from I've never seen anybody knock somebody out from their back like he just literally just pendulumed up and just walloped him <laughs> as he came up. it was crazy <laughs> uh, I've never seen anything like that before I was, was entertaining though yeah uh, for him, he seems to be chasing a, a welterweight fight next with Belal Muhammad, who came off the wrong side of that eye poke from Leon Edwards the week previous. Ke- Kevin Holland is? Yeah, yeah. Welterweight? Yeah. As, as I an think, interesting move. I think that would be, I think that would be, uh, I think that's a good move, actually. I think the welter middleweights are too big for him. Mm. I, do think that, I do think that they're going to start to, like, you know, when you get into that kind of realm when, people figure out that your wrestling isn't there and yeah. they just keep on going for wrestling, going for wrestling, going for wrestling. It's hard to come back from, especially it's like, you know, Connor's a bit the same, isn't he? You know, like he's yeah. come up from featherweight. He's a big, he's still a big lightweight, but sure. came up from featherweight, you know, 
Habib out wrestled them and now everybody's kind of wrestling them, you know. So yeah. <laughs> it's kind of it's it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous place to be, really. Like you gotta figure out your tactics, either get better at wrestling or move division, like you know. Yeah. For Derek Brunson, then on the flip side of that, his his call out seems to be uh well he's he, he knows his place uh at the moment and he knows that he will have improved from the middleweight ranking side of things. You've got Israel Adesanya uh, kicking around the top of the food chain there, but he's looking at a potential matchup with Paolo Costa. How would you see something like that play out? I know Co- Costa Costa dramatically underperformed against Adesanya. I don't know if he said he hit the wine hard at the night before or something, but he was in oh, the, I think the he's, game. Yeah. I think that's his ego talking there. I think he's very I think he's uh, talking shite there excuse me language but he is you know he's not he's he, he didn't he wasn't drinking wine the night before and even if he was like it wouldn't have that much of, unless you're getting smashed the night yeah. before like yeah. you're drinking like two bottles and you're getting absolutely wasted and you're getting no sleep i mean that's the only time really is going to happen like you know he might have performed better but it'd be yeah. more because <laughs> he didn't perform very well i do feel like that actually while we're on the kevin holland topic i feel like it was something along those lines he was doing too much showboating and talking as opposed to actually trying to win the fight mm. you know okay. and i think Ades- adesanya is the same like you know if you want to be him you kind of have to wrestle him a bit you know yeah so. well that's ufc vegas uh 22 so um the big one for us for this weekend and we're, we're sticking with the ufc side of things is 260 and well, we had a couple of uh, title fights on the line, and I say we had a couple of title fights on the line. The one that I think both of us were really looking forward to, I knew about it. You had missed the news on it just before we went on, and apologies on breaking your heart so early in the afternoon, but we're not going to see Alexander Volkanovsky and Brian Ortega go at it for the UFC featherweight title. That yeah, is, that's... that's tough. That's heartbreaking, really, isn't it? What happened? What happened then, Ken? Uh, you didn't get to go into detail. Uh, that's uh, uh, COVID issues for Volkanovski. So he had tested negative all the way uh, through camp. He had tested negative before, <clears throat> I think, his departure from Australia. He had tested negative on arrival uh, in the States. And then within a day or two, uh, as part of the routine testing, had shown up a positive result. So, oh, that, God. so that, that rules him, you know, kind of it at the pretty much at the start of, of fight week. That rules him out of things. I'm not sure what the deal is in terms of a of a date. I would imagine that they're gonna try and get this thing done as soon as is possible. Yeah. They've been, I think they'll be. they've been preparing for months for it, but we're gonna have to wait to see uh Volkanovsky and, and Ortega do it. If it had happened, if it had gone ahead. Are are you are you back in the Brian Ortega camp? Can he can he can he can he do it? Will he do I think it? So I know he upset me by beating Korean Zombie, but yeah. I do feel like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I do feel like that. I'd like to say for some reason I don't know what it is. Do you know the way you just draw? You get draw, like the the, the fanboy part of me is is drawn sure. towards certain fighters, you know, and I just yeah. feel like I. I don't really like Falkonowski. I don't know what. I have no reason. No zero reason. Yeah. Same as Us- Usman. Zero reason. Just don't like. <laughs> <him. Okay. laughs> don't need him. Some reason to not like somebody. So, great <laughs> fighters, but yeah. yeah. No, just don't. I think that. I think that I'd like to see. I'd like my the fanboy and me would like to see Brian Ortega do well and win. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from a, I suppose, uh, athlete's point of view. I probably see Falkonovsky winning that five rounds. I think he'll yeah. probably edge out like a victory. He has that style, doesn't he? And he seems to be able to do well against lanky, awkward strikers. Hence the Max Holloway Max, fight. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Now, I, I think, I think, having seen Max Holloway's last performance against Calvin Katar, that might throw open a, a few questions. I don't think we'll. I don't think we'll see a third Volkanovsky. Uh, Holloway fight anytime soon or if we do it may be a non-title fight should we see Brian mm. Ortega back in the mix that might be an interesting one to look at for later this yeah. year but the ones that are happening and the big one that is happening and is, is finally here is uh, Stipe's title defense for the second time against Francis Ngannou first time around it absolutely did not go Ngannou's way and um, mm. there's been an awful lot of water under the bridge since then uh and I, I think 
you know, I'm I'm a steep A guy. I'm I'm the nice guy. I I like what he's done. I like oh, his level headedness. I like his personality. I like his. I'll get down off I, Stipe, will you? I, get like, I like I like his sheer <laughs> groundedness of everything. I love the fact that he hasn't given up the day job and he still works as a firefighter. And does he still on. work as a firefighter? Oh my! You need to get yourself on on the latest embeddeds and and watch the the routine around the. Oh my god! If Steve if Stipe, if Stipe, if Stipe was a musician, you'd be at the front. You'd yeah, be like I... one of those fine girls at the front. <laughs> With my lighter in this hand and my camera phone in this hand. Spinning, and... <laughs> spinning your knickers and hurling. <laughs> but I, I, li- I, like, I like what happens. And I, I like seeing him fight. Francis Ngannou, on the other hand, is terrifying. And yes. he, he started out like very much on the terrifying side of things. Had a little bit of a blip. And of late has become, I think, even more terrifying now that he's very much focused, worked his way back up the, the heavyweight side of things, has known this title shot was going to be on the line for quite some time. He looks like he's in phenomenal shape. He looks like he's in a very sound, solid state of mind as well, which we've, we've touched on an awful lot before. I have no idea what way this is, is going to go. Have you any thoughts? Uh, I... I really feel like it's going to be a replay of the first. I just feel like Francis has not had enough. He hasn't had enough time grappling, I feel, in competition style formats, you know. Uh, I just feel like that, you know, most of his wins do come by kind of just knocking someone out and guys who are afraid to cut distance and grind out a wrestling win. And I feel like Stipe will probably... You know he'll he'll change it up a little bit because he doesn't want to be too obvious that he's going to do the same thing again. I think he's going to play around with the striking, but he is going to probably grind out a wrestling win. I think again, you know, early or late. I think late. I think it's going to be a five round thing. Oh you know, really? I I think so. Yeah, it was five rounds last time, wasn't it? Yeah, I want to say yes. Mara. I, I think want, it was five. I want, yeah. I want. I want to say yes. I may not say yes, but I want to say yes. Um, okay. So uh, and and five rounds and go all the way to a decision. Yeah, I think so. I think I think Francis is still tough. Like I mean, <laughs> I, I I I feel like it's his second chance at a UFC title fight. He's yeah. not going to go. In. It's going to be harder than the last time. I yeah. feel you know it's going to be a harder fought battle for Stipe. But it'll be generally along the same lines, maybe a slight detour of the okay. game of the same game plan, you know. Okay. Well, that last Nganu fight was January 2018. So there's been three yeah. years. Uh, there's been there's been three years and the trilogy against DC in the time since, where he he'd lost the first one and then won the and then won the other two for Nganu. Uh, okay. I know I'm, I know I'm reading this off my phone as we go. Uh, as we go live. So Nganu came off the steep A loss, followed that up with a, with a loss to Derek Lewis in what was one of the absolute most boring, tiring, wretched fights I think that we've seen at heavyweight ever. Uh, and then yeah. has four on the bounce. So he picked up wins over Curtis Blades, who we've touched on as a, a little bit of no man's land at the minute. Uh, Cain Velasquez, who has departed JDS. And then uh, Rosenstrike was the, the last one. That was May last year. On the Tony, so Ferguson. it was so he bet Rosenstrike, Blades, uh, Junior Dos Santos, and Kane Velasquez. They were his last and he, four, and he knocked all them out, really, didn't he? Uh, he, Curtis Blades, yes, and uh, Kane Velasquez, yes, and Junior Dos Santos, yes, and Rosenstrike, yes, and four fights that never left the first round 45 yeah. seconds against blades 26 against velasquez just over a minute against junior dos santos uh and rosenstrike that i think that was the one where it, it i it might have even been the first punch or the first flurry there was about 20 seconds on the cards he just marched forward uh cleaned house and that was it that's 10 months ago now at this stage yeah like i mean it's not a lot of time in the cage as they're mm. trying to out wrestle people and stuff and yeah, and we've we've spoken so, a good bit about that before. Where and even I know it uh, it was a, a grand one to to throw out at the time. You had the likes of McGregor in the wakes of the Poirier fight, and people who have had those short run fights and those early knockouts 
it doesn't make up for the five round rounds or the three experience rounds. yeah in in that in the cage and the actually live experience yeah. grappling yeah because it's a different type of energy when you're in there no there is no real there is no difference between <clears throat> like you know when you're trying to think about actual mindset concepts of of competing you know it's like a um the idea of the plank i don't know if you ever heard of the one of the plank where you know if you put a plank high up high up from one point to the other and you walk across it it's uh the perception is quite scary because you're way up but if it's if you walk a, across a plank when it's flat on the floor yeah um the plank is exactly the same your perception of the plank is different and it's the same with competing you know there's nothing different really with with uh with competing in the gym and competing in the training rooms or competing in in a live situation but your perception is what's important you know and i feel like that it's important to kind of experiment with every type of idea when you're in there in the cage because if it's if it, i know that he does it in the training room uh, a lot the wrestling of course but you know i feel i think the only i think the only time if you're like a one round grappler uh, or a one round kind of fighter where you're going to stop somebody fast and then you come across the wrestler you've got to kind of like visualize coming up against that wrestler quite a lot to prepare for it for in competition or be prepared to just go with the couple like you know of course if you're a one round knockout artist like in Ghana or McGregor you're just going to do it all the time yeah so I think where they may be falling is actually visualizing wrestling a lot and doing it in the room so it's connecting the visualization with the actual physicality of it in training because that's the only way you're really going to prepare you know yeah because let's be straight like you know I, I, you're not going to really go in and go i can knock this lad out in one round but i'm going to choose to go five rounds and grapple it's just yeah. you're not going to do that you know you're going to take the easy win aren't you every day like but it's, so I, as it's, say hold, hold that thought so when we're looking at the 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 work that happens in the training room and the work that happens in the gym and you will go five rounds and you'll go six rounds and you'll go seven rounds and you'll go eight rounds you'll you'll push yourself as hard and as fast as you can mm. nine times out of ten you're doing this with nobody around you or very few people around you things are very quiet you're going to hear you know the radio is on in the background or your teammates are shuffling around in the dressing room or there's a, a gym clock on the wall that's beeping back yeah. here when it comes to saturday night and it comes to the heavyweight side of things the last time these two guys met um the place was packed now when they meet it will be more akin to that gym environment no mm. crowds you have your corner men you'll hear clearly what's happening from the corner but the buzz and and the hype of the things that might tempt you even towards that knockout win and that that quick escape and little things like that um maybe maybe out of the picture do you think that the 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 lack of of crowds and i know ufc had mentioned earlier in the week that they're they're looking at booking full crowd events now for venues in texas maybe in the not too distant future but in terms of what's happening in vegas do you think that the lack of any crowd may cause any shift at all in the dynamic between i feel like it would have a, it would have an effect and it would play into francis and ganu's advantage i think yeah okay. for sure because the gap is breached like you know from the gym as you said exactly the environment yeah. your perception of the competition is like it's drastically drawn in closer to what it's like in the gym you know when you prepare for a competition and like we just talked about, if you're a one round knockout artist, you got to heavy wrestling in the gym. Keep obviously your primary goal is to knock somebody out as quickly as possible. Mm. But if you visualize along with heavy wrestling in the training rooms, the emotions to come along with a five round grind, you know, the chances of you doing quite well are there. I feel like that, but that's where McGregor and, and Ganu may have fallen is because they might have connected that emotionally you know, they, they might have just like been wholeheartedly going, I'll probably just knock somebody out, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, um, but they still did the training in the room, but they mightn't have connected the visualization to it, you know? And yeah. I feel like that that's where um, they may have fallen behind, maybe, you know? But I do feel like you're onto something there in regards to um, it being in Nganu's favor because there's no crowd to prepare for the outside, the environment. Yeah. Yeah. Without the environment, the pressure of the crowd, 
it's going to be closer to where you'd be in the training rooms, you know, mm. so that's going to have uh, an advantage for Nganu mindset ways for sure. hundred okay. percent. We'll, we'll see how it unfolds. So we've lost the That's the heavyweight championship fight. We've lost the featherweight uh, title fight. Just a, a couple of other ones that, that might, uh, might pique other people's interest. We've got uh, Tyrone Woodley as a result has been moved up to the co-main event at welterweight. He's taken on Vincente Luque. Uh, Thomas Almeida and Sugar Sean O'Malley are going out at a bantamweight. That should be an interesting enough. Uh, an interesting enough. Yeah. <clears throat> we have uh, women's flyweight Gillian Robertson, Miranda Maverick are in there, uh, and beyond that, I know Jessica Pena is back in the fold as well on the top of the prelims card. Um, there's a, there's a there's a couple of decent there's a couple of decent bouts. Oh, Manap is fighting on this card. Yeah. You've got uh, that's Habib's cousin. Oh, very good. Have you met him? (laughs) Yeah, I've sparred with him a few times. Yeah, (laughs) he's a great guy. How would you reckon he he goes, or is he just bringing all the the typical kind of Dagestani heat now and he'll see it off with a breeze? Dagestani heat, I feel, yeah. Dagestani, especially a welterweight, he's bringing that Dagestani heat. Yeah, he was yeah. middleweight there for a while, but I think at I think at welter welterweight he could be a bit of a force to be reckoned with, to be honest. Okay, well sized, well sized. Well, look, it's UFC 260. It's on this coming Saturday night uh, or in the wee hours of Sunday morning. Uh, Irish fight fans can pick it up. I'm pretty sure uh, on BT Sport. Uh, if you've got BT Sport as part of the, the Sky package or if you get the monthly deal through the BT Sport website, you'll get uh, a pass for that fight card as well. Miles, anything else uh, stirring with you of, of interest before we, we knock things on the head, training going well and things progressing in, in yeah. as much as they can? Yeah, yeah. Uh, everything's going well. Um, doing a lot of training myself, doing the general online coach in Malerke. So if anybody has any interest, uh, just Hook me up on milespricemma.com. That's it. Or dot com. Uh, Instagram page. Yeah. <laughs> Super. Miles Price MMA on Instagram. And this has been All Things MMA. I've been Ken McGuire. He, obviously enough, has been uh, Miles Price. It is breakfast time somewhere. And we will do this again next week. Good luck. <laughs>